lesson I'm going to give you today concerns the classification of the various chemical elements. Well, uh, from a lot of time was known that uh, elements were uh, labeled as metals and non-metals. Metals were the elements that when they react, they combine with other elements, give rise to positive ions. Whereas non-metals are those elements that, when combined with other elements, give rise to negative ions. <clears throat> Among the metals were considered the light metals and heavy metals were considered. Light metals were the metals that exhibited a density lower than 3 grams per cubic centimeter, whereas heavy metals are those metals that exhibit a density higher, something like 8, 9, and even more, uh, the, the highest density is known in the periodic table of the elements is that one of the osmium, which is 23 grams per cubic centimeter. Well, then from the very ancient times are known the existence of alkaline metals or alkaline earth metals and uh, inert gases, halogens, but the first systematic classification of the elements was performed by the Russian chemist Mendeleev in 180-70. Well, uh, Mendeleev understood that if the various elements were recorded, were written, uh, with increasing mass number, with decreasing atomic weight, he realized that the chemical and the physical properties of these elements changed periodically. After a particular number of elements, an element that exhibited chemical and physical properties very similar to the one, the, to the one of another element which previously appeared in the, in the, in the, in, in the periodic table, was found. Um, so, he uh, exploiting this uh, consideration, he performed this classification of the chemical elements. You know, uh, I told you in the past lesson that the physical fate and the chemical fate, when you saw the physical properties and the chemical properties of the various chemical elements, depends on the atomic number Z. But at the time in which Mendeleev performed his periodic classification of the elements, the atomic number was not known at all. Actually, the first experiment regarding the structure of the elements were performed at the beginning of the 20th century. The, the periodic classification of the element by Mendeleev was performed in 170, so something like 30 years before. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Mendeleev understood that to keep the rule that the, uh, with increasing uh, a molecular uh, atomic weight, the properties of chemical element changed, uh, three inversion of the atomic weight must be performed. And exactly the three inversion were this one the couple potassium argon, cobalt nickel, and tellurium iodine. So, with the exception of these three couple of elements, if the elements are written in order of increasing atomic weight, the chemical and physical properties do vary with uh, periodically, and after a particular number of elements, an element which show very similar properties to the one of an element that already was appeared in periodic table is found. So let's see some of physical properties which vary periodically, varying the various elements. 
As an example, in this diagram is reported the melting point of various elements as a function of the atomic number. Look at this. We have that the minimum uh, melting point is the one of helium. Then after helium, we have the one of lithium and so on. The highest melting point is the one of carbon. Then after carbon, we have nitrogen, then oxygen, then fluorine, and then we attain another minimum with the neon. After neon, we had a sudden rise of the melting point with the melting point of sodium. Then after sodium, there is magnesium, and the maximum uh, melting point is attained with silicium. After silicium, the melting point decrease again, uh, uh, up to when a minimum again is attained with argon. Let's see another physical properties. These other physical properties is reported the energy of first ionization as a function of the atomic number. Uh, look, the energy of first ionization is the energy that must be given to one atom uh, um, to bring away an electron from this atom. And uh, you can see that the highest value of the first ionization energy is recorded from helium. Then when you go from helium to lithium, you attain a minimum. Then starting from lithium, the energy of first ionization increases, 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 up to when to attain neon, and the maximum is attained again. After neon, I know that there is a, a large fall of the energy of first ionization, and we attain another minimum for sodium. That after sodium, the first ionization energy increases, 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 up to when we attain to argon. Argon, we attain another maximum, and after argon, the uh, first ionization energy decreases a lot to attain another minimum for potassium. Let's see something concerning the chemical properties of the various elements. You know, here we have written the various elements, the one after the other, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. And then we write the second period, the second line, horizontal line of elements, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon, taking care that the elements with similar properties are written in the same column. So, sodium exhibits similar properties to lithium, magnesium exhibits similar properties to beryllium, aluminium similar properties to boron, silicon similar, similar properties to carbon, Phosphorus, similar properties to nitrogen. Sulfur, similar properties to oxygen. Chlorine, similar properties to fluorine. Argon, similar properties to neon. The chemical properties we take into account in this lesson are the compound that this element form with hydrogen and the compound that this element form with oxygen. As far as the compound that this element forms with hydrogen, we have that lithium and sodium uh, co form a uh, compound with hydrogen which has a chemical formula XH, namely the combination, the co ratio or combination of this element is one to one. Whereas beryllium and magnesium um, form compounds with hydrogen that exhibit formula XH2 namely the combination ratio of this element with hydrogen is one to two. Boron and aluminum uh, form elements with hydrogen that exhibit formula XH3, namely the combination ratio of these two elements is one to three. Carbon and silicon form with hydrogen Compound that exhibit formula XH4, namely the combination ratio is 1 to 4. Then, 
nitrogenous phosphorus form compound with hydrogen that exhibit the formula XH3, namely the combination ratio is 1 to 3. Oxygen and sulfur uh, form a compound with hydrogen that has formula H2X, namely the combination ratio is 2 hydrogen, 1 of the element. And then fluorine and chlorine form compound with hydrogen that exhibit formula HX, namely the combination ratio is 1 to 1. Finally, we have that the high inert gases do not form any compound with hydrogen. It's very easy to see the periodic variation of the combination ratio. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, no elements. Let's see also the compound that these elements form with oxygen. As far as oxygen is concerned, this must be said that oxygen may form more than one compound with some of these elements. So it was chosen to make a meaningful discussion of this topic to report the compound with oxygen which exhibit the highest hydrogen content. So the highest oxygen content. The, um, Lithium and sodium form with oxygen a compound that exhibit formula X2O, namely the combination ratio is 2 to 1 of oxygen. Beryllium and magnesium form a compound that with oxygen exhibit a combination ratio 1 to 1 and the formula is XO. Then boron and aluminum form a compound with oxygen which has formula X2O3, namely the combination degree is 2 to 3. Carbon and silicon form compound with oxygen that exhibit formula X2XO2, namely the combination degree is 1 to 2. Then nitrogen and phosphorus form compound that with oxygen that has formula X2O5, namely the combination degree is 2.5 atoms of oxygen per atoms of halogen. Then fluorine and <coughs> chlorine, so also only chlorine, make a compound with chlorine that exhibit formula X2O7, namely the combination ratio is 3.5 atoms of oxygen per atoms of chlorine. Also, in these chemical properties, namely the ability of combining with oxygen, you can see very easily the periodic variation of, this, of the combination degree. Look. Here is 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, no compound. Because also with oxygen, inert gases do not form any compound. <clears throat> well, what is very important in deciding what is the physical behavior and the chemical behavior of the various element is the number of electrons that are present in the outer shell of the various element. So let's see directly. When we see lithium, the electron structure of lithium, which has a Z equal to is one S1, one S2, 2s1. Lithium has only one electron in its outer shell and its electronic symbol is this one with this point, with this dot, which represents the electron which is located in 2s orbital. Beryllium has a z equal to 4. 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2. There are two electrons laying located in the 2s orbital, and these two electrons are written with these two dots here. 
boron has three electrons in its outer shell. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. Nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell. Oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. Fluorine has seven electrons in its outer shell. Neon has eight electrons in its outer shell. After neon, the following element is sodium. Let's see the electron structure of sodium. In the electron structure of sodium, look at this, we have that the atomic number is 11. The electron structure is 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. The 11th electron is located in 3s1 electron. So, this is the electronic symbol of sodium, which this dot, which represents the electron located in 3s1, in the 3s1 orbital. If we compare the electron structure of lithium and the, with the electron structure of sodium, we see that they have, look at this, the same number of electron one located in its outer shell, and they exhibit the same electronic symbol, which denotes the presence of only one electron in their outer shell. So, as far as beryllium and magnesium are concerned, beryllium has two electrons in its outer shell, and these are the two electrons in the outer shell. Well, in the periodic table of the elements, magnesium exhibits a physical and chemical behavior which is completely similar to the physical and chemical behavior of beryllium. They have, in practice, the atomic number of magnesium is 12, so its electronic structure is 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p5, 2p6, 2p5, 2p6. So there are 10 electrons. The last two electrons are located in 3s orbital. So we have 3s1, 3s2. So magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell, which is the third energetic level. Whereas, also has two electrons located in its outer shell, which is energetic level 2. And beryllium and magnesium exhibit very similar physical and chemical behavior. And the reason of this lays in the fact that beryllium and magnesium has only two electrons located in their outer shell. That for beryllium is the 2s orbital, whereas for magnesium is the 3s orbital. But the most important thing is that in this orbital, 2s or 3s, which are the their outer shell, the same number of electrons are located therein. We see that boron has three electrons in its outer shell. These electrons are located in the orbital 2s and orbital 2p, whereas aluminum exhibit three electrons in their three orbital, or in their, in their third energetic level. Two electrons in the orbital 3s and one electron in the orbital 3p. So we have that boron and aluminum exhibit almost the same electronic symbol, which denotes that only three electrons, one, two, three, one, two, three, are located in their outer shell. So the fact that boron and aluminum exhibit very similar physical and chemical behavior 
is related to the fact that these two elements has in their outer shell three electrons. The outer shell is the second energetic level for boron, the third energetic level for aluminum. After aluminum, we have carbon. Carbon has four electrons in their outer shell. The fact that there are four electrons in their outer shell is very clearly depicted by the electronic symbol of carbon. One, two, three, four. Well, the element which exhibits chemical and physical properties similar to the one of carbon is a silicon. And silicon exhibit one, two, three, four electrons in their outer shell. Also the electronic symbol do appear quite the same. One, two electron in the 3s, one, two electron in 2s, one electron in 2p, one electron in 3p, one other electron in 3p, another electron in 2p. So they appear to have very similar chemical and physical behavior. And also in this case, we have that these two element has the same number of electron in the most outer electron shell. As far as nitrogen and phosphorus are concerned, we have nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell, one, two, three, four, five, and phosphory does all the same. It has five electrons in its outer shell, one, two electrons in 3s, one, two electrons in 3s, one electron in px, one electron in px, one electron in PY, one electron in PY, one electron in PZ, one electron in PZ. It is apparent that these two electrons has almost the same electronic symbol, which denotes with no doubt that these elements has five electrons in their most outer shell. Then, oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. And sulfur does quite the same. One, two electron in 3s, one, two. One, two electron in 2px, in 3px, one, two. One electron in 3PY, one electron in 3PY, one electron in 3PZ, one electron in 3PZ. Also for the couple oxygen, sulfur, we have that these two elements show the same number of electrons in their outer shell. After we have fluorine and chlorine, fluorine has one, two, one, two. 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7 electrons in its outer shell, whereas chlorine has 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7 electrons in its outer shell. So the fact that the fluorine and chlorine exhibit similar physical and chemical behavior is highly justified by the fact that these two elements exhibit the same number in their outer shell. Finally, neon has one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer shell. So the octet the eight electron that can be located in energetic level two is completely full. The same occurs for argon. We have one, two, one, two, two, three, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight, one argon at neon do appear <clears throat> to have the same chemical and physical behavior, and this fact is justified
by the fact that these two elements has the same electronic structure. Something more should be said about high inert gases. The fact that these gases do not form almost any compound with all the other elements means that these uh, electronic structure of inert gases are very stable, which means that the energetic situation, the energetic level of high inert gases is very, very, very low. Think about this fact, because when we'll be talking about the formation of chemical bond, we will see that the formation of chemical bond, we will see that a lot of times chemical bonds are formed so as to obtain electronic structure that are similar to those of the high inert gases, which supply, supply large stability to the chemical compound that are formed in this way. Then, after argon, the following element is potassium. Potassium, which has atomic number 19. You know, <clears throat> if you remind the energy scheme that I showed you in the last lesson, you should remember that the energetic level for S has a slightly lower energy of the energetic level 3D. So, the energetic level for S is filled before then the energetic level for 3D. So, one electron is located in... So, the 19th electron is located in the, in the orbital for S. And we have potassium which exhibit this electronic symbol which denotes that only one electron is located in its outer shell. Well, potassium exhibit a physical and a chemical behavior which is very similar to the one of sodium which has only one electron in its outer shell and very similar to the one of lithium, which has only one electron in his outer shell. This is not the case, obviously. Okay? Then, after potassium, we have calcium. Calcium, which has a Z equal to 20. So, the final, the 19th and the 20th electron are located in the 4s orbital. So, we have that calcium has two electrons in its outer shell. Calcium exhibits a physical and a chemical behavior, which is similar to the one of magnesium, which exhibits two electrons in its outer shell, and beryllium, which has two electrons in its outer shell. This is not the case, okay? Well, let's go ahead. After calcium, the following element is scandium. Scandium has a Z equal to 21. After the 4S orbital is filled, the energetic scheme that I showed you in the, in the last lesson tells you that the, 21, the 21st electron is located into the 3D, into the 3D orbital. Well, uh, <clears throat> now these elements <clears throat> exhibit some properties which are different from the properties of all the previous element. Because this element has in its outer shell the two electron that appear in the outer shell for S. Must be, but, but it must be borne in mind that the electron, the energy of the electron located in 3D is quite similar to the energy of the electron located in 4S. So the possibility of creating chemical bond may, uh, 
may bring away all two electrons, also three electrons, because the electron needed to bring away this electron from the atom is quite similar. Starting from scandium, we have a, a, a number of elements that with increasing z, increasing the atomic number, we have that uh, the, the, the remaining electrons are located in the various d orbital. So after scandium there is titanium. Titanium has z equal to 22. So the electronic st structure of titanium is equal to the one of scandium, but there is another electron in, in, um, in 3D, in, in, in the second orbital of type 3D. Then all the other elements that come successively, there is always one electron more. Well, <clears throat> all these elements, which has electron in the 3D orbital, and the 3D orbital is not complete, exhibit chemical and physical properties that are similar to each other and similar to the first one, which is scandium. Why? Because all these elements have in common that they have in their outer shell the two electrons which are located in the full S. But we must be born in, we must keep in mind that the, elect the energy of the electron located in the 3D orbital is quite similar to those of full S orbital. So it may lose the two electrons located in the full S and also some other electrons. The result is that all these elements who has electron in D orbitals exhibit unsimilar to each other behavior. Okay? Then let's see another thing. To keep the rule that elements that exhibit similar chemical and physical properties are grouped in the same column, when we attain scandium, the periodic table of the element must be opened. Because if we wrote scandium below aluminum, scandium do not exhibit similar chemical and physical behavior to aluminum. But there is a reason for this. Aluminum locates its first electron in p orbital, whereas scandium locates its final electron in the 3D orbital. So the electronic structure will be completely different. So to keep the rule that elements with similar chemical physical properties are written in the same group in vertical, in the same group is said exactly, in the same column, when we arrive to scandium, it's necessary to open the periodic table of the element. So we have to write all the elements after scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. And so these 10 elements um, are different from each other because each one was an electron more. So the electronic structure of this element varies as the last electron of scandium is one in 3D1. The last electron of titanium is the one in 3D2. The last electron of vanadium is the one in 3D3 and so on. So all these elements going from scandium to zinc, they exhibit similar chemical and physical properties. And this fact is justified by the fact that all these elements show two electrons in their outer shell. But 
the energy of these two electrons in their outer shell, which is four s, is very similar to the energy of the electron in 3D. So, according to the situation in which this element is found, it may lose two or some more than two electrons, thus giving rise to various compounds. And this chemical behavior is similar for all these elements which has electron in D, which has called transition element or transition metal. When we arrive to zinc, which has atomic number 13, the 31st electron of gallium is located in the 4p orbital, and so it has a electronic structure which is similar to the one of aluminum and which is similar to the one of boron. And actually, gallium exhibits a chemical and a physical behavior which is similar to the one of aluminum and similar to the one of boron. Then, after gallium, we have germanium, which has uh, four electrons in their outer shell. One uh, 4s1, 4s2, 4p1, 4p2. And it has germanium, an electronic structure which is similar to the one of silicon and carbon. And so, the chemical and the physical behavior of germanium is similar to those of silicon and carbon. After, we have arsenic. Arsenic has five electrons in this outer shell, as well as phosphorus, as well as nitrogen, and all these elements exhibit physical and chemical behavior. Finally, we have <coughs> selenium, which has six electrons in its outer shell, and uh, uh, it exhibits chemical and physical behavior which is similar to the one of sulfur and to the one of oxygen. And this fact is justified by the fact that all these elements have six electrons in their outer shell. Finally, brom bromine has seven electrons in this outer shell, as well as chlorine, as well as fluorine. And all these elements that are called halogens exhibit similar chemical and physical behavior. Finally, very finally, we have krypton. Krypton has eight electrons in its outer shell, like argon, like neon, and their chemical and physical behavior is very, very, very similar. In particular, this compound, the high inert gases, do not give rise to any compound. And this fact is caused, is originated by the fact that Heinert gas exhibit their outer energetic level completely filled. After krypton, we have atomic number 37, which correspond to rubidium. And this other element, since we see the energetic scheme of the last lesson, we see that after having filled completely the 5s, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, the, the, the 4p, um, the 4p uh, orbital, the, one, the orbital that is filled is 5s. So we have one electron in 5s in rubidium, which exhibit physical and chemical behavior similar to the one of potassium, sodium, and lithium. And then we have strontium, which has two electrons in its outer shell and exhibit similar behavior similar to calcium, magnesium, and beryllium. After strontium, we have yttrium. If we see the energetic scheme that I showed you in the last lesson, we see that after the, uh, the, the 5s, 5s level, the level, the ergenic level that this field is 4d. So we have yttrium which has ele one electron in 4d, so 4d1. Zirconium which has two electrons in 4d, so 4d2. Niobium which has three electrons in D, so uh, 
43, molybdenum, which has four electron in 4D, so 44, and so on. After we have filled completely the energetic level 4D, and we arrive to cadmium, then when we go from cadmium to indium, we have one electron more, which is located in the 5P orbital. And so, indium has a similar chemical properties to gallium, aluminum, borum. Then we have tin, which has two electrons in the 5P orbital, which exhibit similar properties to germanium, silicon, carbon. Then we have antimony, which has five electrons in its outer shell and exhibit chemical behavior similar to those of arsenic, phosphorus, and nitrogen. And then we have tellurium, which has uh, <clears throat> six electrons in its outer shell, such as selenium, sulfur, and oxygen, and so exhibit similar chemical and uh, physical behavior. And then we have the iodine, which has seven electrons in its outer shell, like bromine, like chlorine, like chlorine. And so all these elements, which are called halogens, exhibit about the same chemical and physical behavior. Finally, we have xenon, which has the outer shell completely filled, which show no chemical ability to react, and has the same chemical and physical behavior of krypton, argon, and neon. Okay? After xenon, we have, if we see the energetic scheme that we saw in the last lesson, that after the 5S, the following uh, energetic level that this field is the 6S. So we have one electron in 6S, 6S1, and we have cesium. Then we have uh, another, uh, another electron in the, in, the six, uh, in the 6S2, and we have a barium. After we have one other element which goes in 3D, after one electron which goes in 3D and we have lanthanium, then if we see the energetic level that I showed you in the last lesson, we saw that the 4F orbital is began to be filled. So after the lanthanium, we have cerium, we have promedium, we have neodymium, we have uh, uh, prome prometium, we have uh, praseodymium, nemium, prometium, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, olbium, erbium, uh, terbium, iterbium, lutetium, and all these elements are different from each other as day one electron in the 4F orbital. As uh, the 4F orbital are 7, 14 electrons may be located, and so these are 14 elements. You know, these 14 elements has in their outer shell only 3 electrons. The one in the 6S and the one in the 5D. So all these elements will show similar chemical and physical behavior because they will exhibit the same number of electrons in their outer shell. It's so similar, this chemical behavior, that those this period of element, cerium, uh, praseodymium, neodymium, prometium, samarium, erodium, gallolidium, and so on, are called lantanides. To say that the chemical and the physical behavior of all those elements which has electron in the F orbital are very, very similar, perfectly mimic the chemical behavior of lanthanum. Then, if we would have kept 
the rule that the elements which exhibit similar chemical properties are written in the same group, vertically in the same column, we should open also here the periodic table of the elements. This fact is not done. Why? Because if we open also here the periodic table of the element, the, the periodic table of the element would become too big. And so it would not enter, it, would not, it, it is not contained in one page of the book. So it is more easy to write all the lantanides separated from the rest of the periodic table. This is the reason why the periodic table of the elements assumes this aspect, this look. Okay? Finally, when we have completely filled the 4F orbital, further electrons are located in the 6D orbital. And we have hafnium, tantalium, wolframium, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, mercury, uh, tallium, lead, bismuth, polonium, astatin, and radon. Okay? And always in this way is kept the rule that elements with the same, with similar electronic structure and similar chemical and physical properties are written in the same column. Okay? <clears throat> Finally, after radon, we have that the following electron is located in the 7s. 7s orbital. So we have francium. After francium we have radium. And after radium we have actinium, which has is electron located in the 6d electron. After 6d, the energetic level 5f is began to be filled. And we have thorium, palladium, uranium, and so on which has elements located in the 5F orbital. Look at this. When we have a symbol of element which are empty, it means that these are not natural elements. These are elements that are synthetically prepared. Okay? And so on. Well, that's all what there was to say about the periodic table of the elements. Writing in this way the various element, you are very much helped. You know, the periodic table of the elements is a large help for the chemist and the chemical engineer and whatever, whoever he has to work with chemistry. Because you see that elements that are written in the same column exhibit the same electronic structure and exhibit very, very similar chemical and physical behavior. Okay? So this lesson about the periodic table of the elements is over. And now we will begin to talk about another, another topic, another chapter of this course of the chemistry, which is the chemical bond.